welcome to this video uh, Nature's or the herd's slam dunk to avoid extinction those that have assisted certain former videos of mine will have read my hypothesis that viruses in general are radical primers to protect individuals and the herd against much more serious threats or de facto extinction de facto extinction being well a large large percentage say 80 90 percent of the world population the herd by means of producing viruses in mass can provoke mass apoptosis when the body failed to do so efficiently so when the body fails to do enough mass uh, to do enough apoptosis the herd or nature uh, causes a mass apoptosis a collective apoptosis that is a slam dunk or the very bitter pill to avoid the risk of de facto extinction 80-90% of the world population by uh, bacterial uh, pandemic like plague that has a historic reputation not only in medieval times where it lasted more or less three centuries so mass apoptosis can be also called inflammation, infection cytokine storm or autoimmune disease uh, and uh, it is a very bitter pill because in cases it can, it can cause severe damage irreversible damage and that they are uh, even with all the measures uh, humans uh, took there are roughly 7 million deaths but that's still 0.1% of the world population of roughly 8 billion 0.1% factor 1000 more are at risk and that's what um, that's the slam dunk, dunk showing us so mass apoptosis triggered by a virus and in a sufficiently high number of persons will be called a viral epidemic or pandemic so are there some indicators of extinction because to justify such an action plan and to step a, li a little bit beside of business as usual uh, most people will be only convinced when they are clear indicators of extinction so this is the link of a video already done by me I will include soon several uh, videos I forgot to include them now I give you a simple sunburn example so you could understand on an indi individual level what happens on a collective level it is not the sun that causes the redness or the bitter pill which is the sunburn, eh, the redness but it is our own body and immune system that causes inflammation to cure the damage that we are not even aware of because we, when we are burning uh, uh, ha having damage we are not aware because it's on microscopic level uh, or DNA is to some extent extent damaged. While sun on our skin is important for health, 
and also cause it also causes damage to our DNA. Let's call it or compare it with a de facto extinction. Damage to our DNA is something serious if it never would be repaired. It would at least give uh, cause it could cause cancer with a trigger, an additional trigger. Uh, but this is just an ex example. Some DNA is damaged, but we do not see it because it's microscopic. However, our Im immune system detected it and wants to resolve it. So the slam dunk of our immune system is the inflammation and the increased blood, f blood flow to feed the cure of the damaged DNA. And this cure with the pill will cause the redness or sunburn. Sunburn comes after you are exposed to too much sun and it's not happening while you are exposed and start to suffer the damage. It, it, the bitter pill has to uh, take form, to join forces. So in this case, there is no virus in play at all. Possibly, in the case of repairs after s something simple like sunburn, there will be transposable elements at work doing the cure or the microsurgery. I will show you in a minute. And they are virus-like and they are descendants of a no today extinct virus. But that does not matter at this point. End of the sunburn example. Now cure or apoptosis in the case of degenerated cells. Now we are back to health crisis that we are uh, that we are in. Cure or apoptosis in the case of degenerated cells, but this time not by a superficial sunburn, the degener degeneration. So we are talking about channel degeneration. So much that the cell is vulnerable, vulnerable for a pathogen like uh, a plague uh, bacteria. In the case of a virus infection, we're talking about the threat, which is uh, the bacterial infections, infection, but the body will prime with a slam dunk with a virus infection to prime so the bacterial infection will not take place. Instead of a virus, the priming could have happened with a bacteria. But bacteria are much more dangerous and much more out of control of our immune systems. Because our immune system can uh, regulate how much virus we produce. That is in all the cases that people did not get very ill and did not die or did not use uh, hospital which is probably I'm not sure w what is the official number right now but it's, it's, it's close to 100 percent at this point point one point one percent of the global po population has died uh, That is after three years of bombardment with virus. So when the immune system decides it needs apoptosis to eliminate degenerated cells, it will use transposable elements.
by preference. If it does not have transposable elements that can do the job, it will call viruses. This is, in fact, this is a infection or, or an insertion, insertion of a virus that you all know. It's the HIV virus, but all viruses are inserted in a similar way. Certain viruses. Um, this is a coronavirus that is that made contact with the cell. This is the cell. And it made contact, and these are the spikes. And only the RNA was let into the cell or sucked into the cell by the cell. The active part is the cell because the virus, as we know it, is outside, is excluded, never enters the cell. Uh, so to cure, to have the apoptosis, and if there is no transposable elements at hand that can do the job, the cell tissues hurt will look for viruses in its own DNA. 8% of our DNA is composed of many different viruses genomes, which is quite an immense collection of viruses, since viruses have short DNA. Must be hundreds, if not thousands of viruses that we have in our DNA. But for this job, they don't serve. Otherwise, no external virus needed to be called to prime. Then, the cells of the body will look for viruses in the local herd, then in the global human herd, and as a last resort, they will look in the global animal herds for a virus that can do the job. There, in the global animal herds, they will look for or end up using the first suitable virus it can lay hands on. I mean the cells, eh? the cells are laying their hands on RNA of a virus, in this case an animal virus, but after it starts to circulate in humans it starts to become also a human virus, at least if it's not, let's say, uh, resolved totally. So, if the coronavirus becomes endemic, it has become a human uh, virus and not only an, an external animal virus. So, um, once it has obtained out of the animal world, a suitable virus, it needs to learn to make it efficiently and it needs to mutate it in a less deadly version of virus. It has to make it more human and less deadly and if possible more infectious because otherwise it will not prime the whole herd, the whole human being and that's the intention. At least if all the 
herd, global population, has the degenerations that make the global population, the 8 billion humans, vulnerable for a severe threat like the plague or a fungi that never before was a problem. So the cells, tissues, herd will start tweaking the animal virus, cause or create variants that are automatic, automatically promoted when they get become more infectious and less deadly. Because a, a too deadly virus will exclude itself by killing its host or hosts. Did the herd detect a serious threat in 2019 uh, for it to call an animal virus, a new animal virus, out of the animal world? The way I see the herd and innate immune system, the herd did detect a serious threat or threats in 2019 or even before. Please remember MERS in 2012 and SARS in 2002, amongst other viral epidemics, including the Spanish flu in 2018, which was a virus out of the animal world. I made a video about uh, presenting these epidemics, historic epidemics, this is a whole historic epidemics starting with the Spanish flu, uh, epidemics during World War II, which was several, and then again Mars and before Mars SARS and in 2019 COVID. So I made a video and that could be of a lot of interest and you would see how what I describe happened systematically and completely. So health organizations but also the herd's innate system detected serious threats, possibly the same threats, and acted upon them. And in some way, health organizations were acting, but then nature, or the herd innate uh, immunity, made this slam dunk that we call, well, the actual pandemic. I have some questions here. Why did nature did this slam dunk and got so vicious in it? Well, we didn't prevent sufficiently at the root. And nature wants to do it at the root. So nature sees the threats different than we humans or health organizations see the threats. Nature will have no interest in business as usual and health organizations have to deal with it and I, I could show, maybe I show one day, that they have great difficulty, they did great efforts uh, 2016 or even much before, but they had difficulty dealing with business as usual and then came the actual pandemic in 2019 and then let's say there was no time to think or study deeper. So we need to study ways to prevent degeneration, that is real prevention. Prevent degeneration at the root. 
and prevention could include fever and provoking fever-like situations but that is not accepted because it's not studied and we should study it we should study uh, how we can prevent it at the root so I just want to show this is a bacteria it could be a plague bacteria it probably isn't uh, and this is how viruses attacking so viruses do not only attack human cells that are degenerated they can directly attack a threat these are all viruses let's say with a kind of a spike or injector because it fits more <laughs> and they replicate inside of the bacteria but as you could expect the bacteria has its own defense this is a bacteria viruses don't have flagella and these are also viruses that let's say let's call this an advanced spike So, I would have liked to explain better why I showed this and also why I included this. It's unfortunately it's in Portuguese. That is, COVID 19 is, is not really a virus problem, it's a disease of the blood vessels. But of course, we see the virus, and the virus is really a trigger, because it's intended to be a trigger. But the trigger, the cytokine storms, etc., they cause other problems, secondary problems. And that's why they call, here in this case, it a disease of the blood vessels. But this is only a symptom when it gets out of hand because there is was too much degeneration to solve or the immune system got got too vicious. Um, so next video what we will compare uh, for scientific reasons what the health organizations detected and they detected quite a few things you should be am amazed first of all this is probably launched in 2020 and they detect a perfect storm and it's caused by COVID-19 well I, I agree with everything but in, in my hypothesis COVID-19 is a trigger not the cause so but that that's a detail uh, so this is also something that World Health Organization detects and it, it is related but I won't explain that right now World Health Organization Food and Agriculture Organization FAO detected AMR anti-microbial resistance in 2010 or even long before but it's in 2010 that they have a tripartite in 2015 they create a global action plan on antimicrobial antimicrobial resistance 2016 United Nations political declaration on resistance 2019 they start talking about One Health which I approve a lot but I have some remarks but then you know what happened in 2019 and in 2022 they pick it up after 
three years of course because of the health crisis because of this health crisis threat perfect storm so they noticed long time ago 2010 or very much before what did media detected I just filled in one but this is uh, I think this is of the Lancet not sure if, if the diagram is of the Lancet I, I found it in the Lancet and so they know about it and they call it dual health threat and several call it triple health threat by now and what did scientists and research detected and you will be amazed what they detected but that's for another video and this is it, this appears to be said by uh, a CDC official and this is very serious that this must symbolize an antibiotic much use or wrong use of antibiotics but it's more complex than that but still it's very strong the CDC officials seem to have said spoken about the pandemic explosion of antibiotic resistance is not seen and maybe he doesn't want to say the same thing as I want to say or as I'm saying but you're saying it any anyway pandemic explosion of antibiotic resistance so he relates the pandemic to antibiotic resistance to antimicrobial resistance because AMR is antimicrobial resistance it's, it's, it's wider and this is uh, best total cases cases since 1954 and this is war and where are the peaks so this is for next video I can assure you it's it's very uh, interesting and very important this is 2016 this is not much more than three years before the official uh, cases of COVID in China. It is the global distribution of natural plague foci in 2016. So I suppose together with World Health Organization and others claiming that plague is re-emerging I suppose that you have a first idea that that is a threat and it's not a threat they are talking about but it is a threat I'm talking about and it's all related thanks a lot for watching Bye for now.